This week on Focus Outdoors, we're headed back to the Glacier Lake region of South Dakota, fishing out of the Royal Lake Lodge. We'll be joined by Andrew Johnson and his son Gavin. Gavin's enthusiasm was contagious. Stay with us as we fish the Glacier Lake region of South Dakota. This day started out to be beautiful, warm, sun shining, and no wind. An awesome day to spend on the ice with good people. To add to an already perfect day, the fish were biting. What a grand day for a young man to learn the fishing ropes from his dad. Pike action was hot and heavy, but the day had weather conditions that would be changing. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's one of the rare days in South Dakota where we don't have too much wind. It's the third week of March. There's still 40 inches of ice up here in northeastern South Dakota. And as we're out here fishing with some tip-ups for some pike, we, we got into a few other discussion topics, as is often the case when you're out doing anything outdoors. And we started talking about pheasant production. And a lot's been made the past couple years of South Dakota's pheasant numbers dropping. And a lot of that has to do with a lot of the grassland, marginal land that was out there was being put into production because corn prices were so high. And a couple of different things have happened that should boost the population here going forward. Uh, one of the things being the new farm bill where, you know, crop insurance was tied to subsidies and it was restricted as to what could be insured. So not as much marginal land will go back into production or will get turned into production. Um, and that'll be a huge boon to the pheasant population because that's the that's the cover that deer, pheasants, fox, coyote, I mean everything thrives on are those little pockets of cover here and there. Um, the county we're in right now, Day County in northeastern South Dakota, has a pilot program through Pheasants Forever uh, where the local Pheasants Forever chapter, um, if you have a little corner of a field that you can't plant or it's going to go fallow, um, the local chapter is coming out with Pheasants Forever and putting in a little food plot just with an overseeder and then dragging it in with an ATV like this Honda. And it's a cocktail mix of, of different foods to sustain them um, as well as cover for the young, if we have another winter like this one. Uh, it'll just give them another area to, one, to nest this year um, and two, to survive through the summer and into the winter. So things are looking up here. It'll be... Uh, uh, it's a good day and it's going to be a great fall. Hey. Okay, this is still spinning. 
I'm gonna give it a chance to stop and turn the bait around. I'm hoping that's the stage of that. Now it stopped. I hope it turned the bait around to swallow it. Walleye. You walleye? Yep. This is actually a hook made by Max Lure. It's got a little, little bit of uh, glow material on it there to add for some visibility. But I've got probably a six inch uh, sucker chub here. And what I do is I call it reverse hooking. You want to run that hook point just beside the dorsal fin. You run it up towards the head and pull that out. And what that does is this chub will sit there and as he flutters and as the fish comes by and spooks him, he'll swim up. And he'll flutter up like so and he'll just slowly fall down. And I think that has a lot of triggering cues for these fish. Also, the way this is hooked, it's very tough for him to pull that hook out. It doesn't look like it's hooked by much, but they literally have to pull skin to get that bait pulled off. So it's a very durable way to do it and I think it helps with a lot more strikes. We'll get him down there and see what we can come up with. Still there. Ah, oh, I gotta come back. One key to what I'm doing here, we're in some very windy conditions. You can see what I'm doing is I'm using the wind to my advantage and just letting this line loop out. And that way we don't have knots and when that fish wants to run, if you get a really good one, he can, he can run. Uh, this is something very interesting too. We're at laid ice, we've got honeycombed ice. And something I know better than what to do is you can end up with your line actually getting caught because it will want to cut into that softer ice in the bottom. Now this is what's just happened to me here. I'm trying to free that up. Got my long handled scoop here and see if I can't. Yep, but there, I broke it free. You want to kind of move your line around a little bit in the hole so it doesn't just pull in one spot. And this particular fish had pulled quite a bit of line out. So I was continually just pulling in that one spot and it just cut itself into the ice. It's something good to know if you get a really good fish on, you can lose them just because of that, that factor. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we've customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds to make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. No matter the size, age, or activity level of your best friend, you want a dog food that's natural, feeds great, and is full of all the goodness you demand. That's what we pack into every bag of Country Vet Naturals. Country Vet Naturals are just what the name says, natural goodness in every bag. We also make grain-free cat and dog food and treats. Learn more and find a dealer at CountryVetNaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners. Well, as you might be able to tell, I spent a lot of time behind a shotgun. Whether it's at the clay target fields, sporting clays fields, doing exhibitions, or bird hunting, I always trust my shooting skills to the Rio Elite. Not only for the lighter recoil, but as you can tell, the harder hitting, consistent patterns. These clay targets don't stand a chance when you shoot Rio Elite.
hit the hole. It's the little pike, probably 14, 15 inches, just a little one. Little pike again, I believe. All right, we're out here at uh, Lake, Late Ice. We're in the Glacial Lakes of South Dakota. We've got a large tip up spread out here. We're catching just tons of little pike. We'll pick up some walleyes here as the day wears on. But what this is, it's great for kids. Gavin, is probably your first time out ice fishing. It was yesterday and today. So we're trying to get him introduced to the sport, show him a few things here, pass along some experience uh, that I've learned the hard way over the years. But it's great action. You've been running the tip ups for two days, haven't slowed down yet. We're going to show him how to jig here and try to get some of these on a rod and reel because it's a heck of a lot more fun than pulling them hand over hand or watching me do it. We've got a nice little lure that works great for something like this too. It's, it's a uh, Salmo zipper. It's got rattles in it and it's an aggressive style lure which should work good for these northerns. The beauty of it is, is we don't have to continually tip it. So we can just go from hole to hole and hop around. Got a HT Maverick rod, which is one of my favorite rods. They got a great white arbor spool, just a slick little outfit here. But I'm gonna lower this down. What I'm gonna do is show you this flasher, and this is Vexilar's uh, FLX28. So you got the latest generation of stuff here. Just lower him down. You see how that's moving up and down there? And I want to set that so I can just barely mark my lure. And as I move that up and down, right there's a fish that showed up right on the bottom. See that? What it does is it shows you where you're at, and that, that red is the bottom, and that was a fish that came through. He may not bite, but it's showing you the concept of it. There he's back again. He's just on the edge, edge of the cone there. He's thinking about it. What I'm trying to do is coax him up, and a lot of times that will get him to go. Now what we may do in a little bit here, knowing this, is if they won't hit this aggressive lure, we can downsize and go to a spoon and tip it with a minnow head or a, uh, a whole minnow perhaps, but what it's showing us is we have fish here. We'll work him a little bit more. There you go. Maybe hold it just up here a little bit. Maybe you can tease him up. If you can get him to come up, a lot of times they will come up and they'll, they'll thump on that thing. Bottom line is we got you showed the basics. I may switch you up with another outfit here that may work a little better for them. And we'll just have you jump around these different holes. And I'm sure you're going to get one eventually. He's down there sniffing it, isn't he? But that's the beauty of, of this modern uh, technology we have nowadays. Is before, you know, gosh, you could sit here and jig this hole for two hours and never know if there was a fish there or not. We know if there's a fish there. Now, what this has told me right away is I need to downsize things. Before, you know, you didn't know if your lure was good or it wasn't good if there's fish or there weren't fish. So it's just a very vital tool. And the nice thing too is uh, this stuff just gets better. You know, every doggone generation of this stuff comes out, it's better and better. You know, the old FL8s that we all started with, great units, still great units today, do everything they were designed to do. These are just clear. Uh, they're easier to read, varying light conditions. It's just, just a slick outfit. Barely wiggles. He's there, but he's off in the distance. He's just on the edge of what this can see. Go ahead and let a little more line out. You can't tease him back up. There you go. It's kind of neat, you know, how much to, to let out. Now you can reel it up till you see your lure again. Just there you go. Now when you drop your rod tip down, right in position. Okay, one more trick here, Gavin. We had an aggressive lure, we went to a spoon, a typical spoon, and now, and we had a whole minnow, we're just going to take and pinch him off, so just the heads there. And maybe you'll take that, lower that down and we'll try that, and by God, if he doesn't go, we'll just find ourselves a different hole and a different fish.
It's awful close. Nice little perch. Here, let's go get this tip up. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we've customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds to make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Dennis Foster here. I'd like to introduce you to the Drado Catch and Release Boat Latch System. It's back the trailer into the water, pop the cord, and away we go. Once our day in the water is done, we simply roll the boat up onto the bunks until it achieves contact with the bow eye. It clicks securely into place, and away we go. We are exclusive partners with B2Outdoors.com. That's where you're going to want to go and order your very own system. You can enter the promo code ITIME PROMOTIONS and receive free shipping on your items. When it comes to dog food and treats, you want something natural. A dog food or special reward that feeds great is made in the USA and helps your best friend live a long and healthy life. That's what you get with Country Vet Naturals, natural goodness in every bag. And for those of you who want grain-free, we've got that too. Find a dealer and learn more about Country Vet Naturals dog food, cat food, and treats at CountryVetNaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners. Foster with uh, Focus Outdoors. I'm under pro staff. We've been fishing in uh, one of the areas that I fish quite a bit. I hail from northeastern South Dakota. This is a glacial lakes region. A lot of folks are familiar with it. If you're not, you should become familiar with it. We've got a lot of great opportunities up here. We've had uh, really changing weather. Actually, yesterday we got sunburned, probably in the mid 50s, uh, catching a lot of pike. We we're on late ice here. We're in the third week of March. Exploring a lot of opportunities, and that's one thing in our part of the state we are truly blessed. We can do this this time of year. Uh, we've got snow goose opportunities that uh, are as good as anywhere in the nation. We've got open water opportunities below our dams in the Missouri River. The reservoirs there are quite well known, Owahi probably being the most notable. Uh, one thing, too, is we don't have closed seasons here. You know, we've got the opportunity to catch fish all year round. We've had a lot of pike, we've had bass, we've had a few walleyes mixed in. Uh, we're going to wrap this up today on that type of thing. We're just going to go strictly after some perch tomorrow. But probably the thing that I like the most today is we had Gavin out here. Gavin's just getting broke into the world of ice fishing. We got him out playing around with a Vexilar a little bit, and literally I didn't spend five minutes with him. I walked away from him, thought he's going to take this thing. And I'm just catching up with Andrew, his father here. And by the way, Andrew was the editor of the Outdoor Forum, which is a great publication you guys need to check out. It's an up and coming publication. I've been in the outdoor writing scene for a few years now, and I tell you what, uh, the quality is top flight. Anyway, tell us about what Gavin picked up. Well, it was like Dennis said, it was his first ice fishing trip, and we thought it'd be a good little father-son time. Late ice, you know, even today's a little bit cooler, but mid 30s, he can run around on the ice. You know, fast action on the tip ups. There's a few up out here as we're, we're talking. Yep. He picked up on the Vexilar. And how many perch did you pull up off the Vexilar when you were jigging? 
probably like three or four. Three or four right off the bat. As soon as he figured out how to mesh those those flasher signs. And it's been a great time. Great host of Focus Outdoors, Dennis Foster, Northeastern South Dakota. Um, and I couldn't be more proud. Yeah, and I tell you folks, there's some great resources if you want to call ahead and get information, line up lodging, that type of thing. We're actually staying at Roy Lake at Roy Lake Resort. Give Jan a call. She'll take care of you. The accommodations are super here, super pretty. And it isn't just this time of year. You need to come back and experience this in the summer. And probably my favorite time is the fall. There's phenomenal smallmouth fishing out here that is literally untouched. Another super resource for the Great Lakes is Doug at the Sportsman's Cove in Webster. He's got a recorded fishing report that's up to date. You can wait until you hear that. Talk to him personally. He'll put you in the right direction. Uh, keeps great bait on hand, great products on hand. And you'll find that the folks up here are just super, super friendly. Uh, it's just, it's a great destination that's off the radar for a lot of folks, you know. Off the deck, a few steps onto the ice, a few more steps at your tip up catching fish. What fun. I'm going to show you folks a little trick here, and it's actually how I learned it, is on a day like today, uh, getting all your chubs ate up on you, and I believe in big baits. So what I was forced to do, and it actually gives a nice different look to it, is go with two fathead minnows. I'll lip hook one as you traditionally would, and then I'll take another one, and I'll get him upside down here, and I'll actually tail hook that upside down. And what they're going to do is they're going to struggle against each other. They're going to create the impression of a bigger bait. They're going to send out a lot of vibrations. It's just going to feel bigger. And that will cue some bites. And I've even had days when the fish are really tough. It's just a different look to things. And we've been doing that with our shallower tip-ups here because, quite frankly, we're going to run out of chubs before we're done here today. So we're saving some bigger chubs for evening in hopes of catching some big walleyes. But it is working for us, so we're going to keep going with it, conserve a few of our chubs, and we'll get this back down and get another fish on here. Still there, just slowly rolling it. Slide him right back in. Can you get a look at this tail? Something took a bite out of it. It's got a wound. He'll be fine. He's hungry. I think we missed him, buddy. We just had to convince him a little bit. All right. It's got a little weight to it. What I'm doing here helps a lot. We're having these northerns make big runs and they get a lot of line out as he goes along. And we're not going to have an issue. Now, if this fish wants to run, I can simply let him run off the school my thumb is a drag. We don't have any line on the ice to get caught. We referred to this earlier. They do take a lot of line or laid ice in this honeycombed ice. It will cut into that ice. I don't feel any head shape. Ooh, this is 
got a little more weight to it. This is not shaking yet either. We might have a decent walleye here. They're starting to shake a little bit too much. Really come at me. And that's key, you gotta keep up with these fish and keep tension on them, which I am barely doing as we speak. See, we're in this wind. I'm trying to spool this line out in front of me. No, it's just a pipe that played dumb. Real, look how black it is. Yeah, he is. He's got different coloration than a lot of these fish we've been catching. I'm going to guess he's up some of them dead weeds. After catching a ton of fish on a day where the weather was constantly changing, <laughs> it was great to be able to walk a short distance to a nice warm room where a hot meal <laughs> awaited us. Roy Lake Lodge, what a grand place. <laughs> Uh, they suck at getting them in, but I catch them well. Probably a 16 inch walleye here that we've been talking about should be showing up, so this day's looking up as we wear on. Yep. That's our show for this week fishing the Glacier Lake region of South Dakota out of Roy Lake Lodge. Wasn't it fun to see Gavin's excitement as he experienced ice fishing with his dad? Remember, do these three things for me. One, take a child with you the next time on your fishing trip. Two, generously support your favorite conservation organizations. And three, spend some time in the next week where you focus on the outdoors. For our staff, I'm Steve Hammer. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time when we continue the journey making more memories. Angels to the shore. I'm going to find me a dirt road and get right in the groove. Let these chains of life unwind till I get loose. I want to roll down a window and reach out and touch the reeds. Let that crazy world out there go on without me. It's like that river only knows one way to flow Ain't nothing gonna change me Cause I've got a dirt road so